Welcome to Philosophy Vibe. My name is George and today I want to look at time travel, how it's depicted in movies and the philosophical problems that always arise whenever movies deal with time travel. Now, don't get me wrong, I love time travel movies and these are often my favourite sci-fi films and some even my favourite films of all time. However, Whenever a film deals with time travel, there are always huge problems and they are always overlooked. And this is because time travel inherently brings immense philosophical and metaphysical problems and the films just cannot address this. Well, in this video, I want to address these problems. I want to look at some specific films, how time travel works in these films, and the philosophical issues that arise, and perhaps discuss some potential theories that may fix or at least improve on these stories. As I'm going to be discussing these movies, there will be some spoilers, so there's your warning. And with that, let's begin. Now firstly, when I'm talking about time travel problems, I'm only really talking about travelling back in time. To be honest, I don't actually find any philosophical problems when it comes to travelling into the future. The idea of travelling into the future makes sense in theory. Time dilation greatly aids this concept. The idea that time can be perceived differently in different locations. So in theory, if you travel really far into outer space, the time you experience is different to that on Earth. So in simple terms, where you feel as though you've travelled for one year, 10 years could have gone by on Earth. This is technically travelling into the future, and I think a movie that depicted this perfectly was Interstellar. We saw Cooper leave for a space mission, he says goodbye to his family and he goes off. Being in the weird crazy corners of the universe, time ran completely differently, and although it felt like he was gone for like two or so years, when he got back something like 90 years had passed. He meets his daughter who was a child when he left, but is now in her 90s. Another movie that depicted this really well was Time Trap. Similar sort of concept, but instead of outer space, it's a specific cave on Earth where time is all messed up and you experience intense time dilation when you enter the cave. As soon as you enter the cave, from the outside, you look like you're stuck not moving at all. But inside the cave, you're moving and talking and everything is flowing. What is actually happening is that every few seconds in the cave is a year outside the cave. So entering this cave is effectively time traveling into the future. Again, both of these make sense. No real philosophical problems with this. The only philosophical problems arise when we're talking about going back in time. Here is where the issues start. So first, I want to begin with one of my all-time favourite films, Terminator. For those who are unaware, Terminator is a sci-fi film about a future where Skynet, an AI neural network, gains self-awareness. Uh, when humans try to destroy it, it retaliates by trying to wipe out the human race. After launching a nuclear attack, Skynet then creates and controls cyborgs who hunt down the remaining humans. However, one human named John Connor leads a resistance against Skynet and the cyborgs and eventually wins. In a last attempt to win the war, Skynet sent a cyborg back in time, before John was even born, with a mission to kill John Connor's mother, Sarah Connor, effectively making it so that John Connor will never be born and so cannot lead the resistance. John Connor then sends a soldier, Kyle Reese, back in time to protect Sarah and make sure that she lives in order to birth the future hero. So what got really confusing about this movie is that the interaction of the future characters with the past completely messes up the timeline to the point that the film doesn't actually make sense. When Kyle Reese went back in time to save Sarah, he actually fell in love with her and ended up impregnating her and was in fact John Connor's father. But how could this have happened in the first place? Think of the original timeline, right? We have Sarah Connor. She meets some guy and he impregnates her and John Connor's born. Then the machines take over, the war happens, and then John Connor sends Kyle back in time and the events of the movie unfold. That means that the John Connor that's born during the period of the movies would not be the same person fighting the machines and the one that sends Kyle Reese back, as he would have a different father with different life experiences. This is a huge problem, as we are completely altering the personal identity of John Connor. This is confusing, but as soon as Kyle goes back in time, he becomes John Connor's father. So the John Connor standing there at the time machine, the first John Connor who sent Kyle back in time, he would effectively disappear as 
His father is now changing, and so would everything about him. And who knows if this new John Connor would be the same rebel hero as the first? Most likely not. So this is a huge problem. Now, we can stick to the idea that it is the same John Connor. For the sake of the story, it makes sense, right? His dad is a warrior soldier, his mother is aware of the coming Judgment Day and the war with the machines, so she trains her son to become this leader. It makes sense in terms of John's personality and how he became a hero. But how could his birth come about? If you need the Kyle from the future... When John is born, his own father is not technically born. So if you follow the first timeline, the first timeline that got us to the point of Kyle being sent back in time, Kyle would not have been there to impregnate Sarah. He was only sent back in time because the original timeline led us to a point where the machines needed to alter the past. But in the first instance, the first timeline that led us to that point where the machines started going back in time... Who was John's father? How did he get there in the first place? Kyle was only his dad because he sent him back in time. But before that, before he sent him back in time, who was John's dad? And if it was someone else, we're back to the problem I already mentioned, as this would alter the personal identity of John. Now, you can take two other options here. The first is that when the machines go back in time, and when Carl Reese goes back in time, this starts a new timeline that exists in parallel to the original, but does not affect the reality of the original timeline. Right, but this is this is weak, because what's the point, right? Think about it, the machines are about to lose the war, so their last desperate fight back is to create a new timeline that has no effect on their reality it still means they will lose the war and they will be shut down by the humans. So what's the use in some other possible world where they might win the war? It's pointless and the AI would know that. The other route you can take is that the timeline is an infinite loop. There's no beginning, there's no end. Kyle created John, so John can send Kyle back in time to create John, so John can send Kyle back in time to create John, so John can send Kyle back in time to create John, and so on and so on. Just try and get your head around that. Time is not linear, it's circular, and more so, it exists all at once, and therefore was created all at once. So your time loop was made all in one go. You are simultaneously 5, 25, 50, and 100, all at the same time. Free will is then gone. Nothing you do, no actions you take actually mean anything. Nothing affects anything. There's no cause and effect, just this infinite loop that will spat out all at once and will carry on going round round and round exactly the same way then what the hell is the point of trying to change the past there is no past or present or future just this loop you're not going back in time there is no back or forward nothing can be changed which completely destroys the whole point of time traveling it destroys free will and it destroys cause and effect we are then lumbered with so many philosophical and metaphysical questions it just becomes exhausting so as much as i love the terminator too many philosophical problems with time traveling in this film Moving on, another popular film that I want to look at that deals with time travel is none other than the great Back to the Future trilogy. Three cheeky funny films, but of course huge philosophical problems with these two. Now this film is about the teenager Marty and the crazy scientist Doc who creates a time machine and goes back and forth in time. Now, similar to The Terminator, this movie deals with physical time travel. But the main problem with this trilogy is that the characters can view and interact with past and future versions of themselves. This happens throughout the trilogy. Marty saves other time-traveling versions of himself. And this, for me, is the biggest problem of time travel, as fundamentally, it violates Leibniz's law. The law states that no two distinct things can exactly resemble each other. So think about that. If you go back in time, say you go back in time by one millionth of a second and you see yourself, you are now two distinct entities. But equally, this is you. You are identical to you. So this raises the question, can there ever really be two yous? If then you go back and share a timeline with another you, the identity problems are immense. Who is the real you? 
Which one is you as you know yourself now with your memories and your qualia? And what happens if you kill a version of yourself? Do you die? What if a past or future version of you is trying to kill you? Would you not instantly see this as someone else, someone distinct trying to kill you? But how can they be distinct? How can they be a distinct agent if it's actually you? In addition, if you go back to a past you and interact with a past version of yourself, would you automatically have those memories as now this is part of your past? Back to the Future raises even more problems as the characters also interact with past versions of their parents and ancestors. And this leads to what is known as the grandfather paradox. Think about this. Say you go back in time to when your grandfather was a young man before he had his children. Then say you killed your grandfather, meaning he never had children and subsequently you were never born. That means that you would cease to exist. But if you cease to exist, then you would not have gone back in time and killed your grandfather. So your grandfather would be alive. But if your grandfather is alive, it means you would be born and you would go back in time to kill him. But if you kill him, then you would not exist and so on and so on. This is a mind-bending logical paradox that arises because of physical time travel. The best way to avoid problems of physical time travel would be mental time travel. A film that deals with this that I want to look at is X-Men Days of Future Past. So this is what I liked about this movie. It's not that your body is transported into the past, but rather your mind is transported into your past body. So effectively, your current mind overwrites your previous mind, putting you in control of your past body. I do like this. I think it makes more sense than you being physically transported into the past as we don't have the identity problems that comes with it like we do with Back to the Future. Of course, the actual magic of how it's done isn't explained, but you can imagine some sort of mind-body pairing based on DNA and personal identity. Of course, you are limited in terms of how far back you can go, right? You would only be able to go as far back as when you had some sort of physical presence, perhaps as far back as your conception. Nonetheless, philosophically speaking, I think this is easier to work with than multiple use. What I also think Days of Future Past does right is that when someone is interacting with the past, the present scene, whatever that may be, immediately disappears in its current form which is correct right if you're interacting with the past with the intention of changing the future in the same timeline that future would just instantly cease it never happened right you changed the past so in the initial scene kitty has the power to time travel people's minds she sends bishop's mind back in time he succeeds in changing the past so instantly that scene disappeared it never happened that to me makes sense. If you're sticking to the single timeline, that's how it's done. However, there are problems that arise within this movie. So we start with a dystopian 2023 where all the X-Men are being wiped out by Sentinels. Wolverine is then sent back to 1973 to stop the mutant killing Sentinels from being created. So his 2023 mind overrides his 1973 self. And after the events of the movie unfold and the past is changed, he wakes up in 2023 seeing that the entire future has changed and it's not the dystopian hell that was there before he was transported. Here's the thing. Wolverine, let's say, has memory data A. This was his life, experiencing everything that he experienced with his mind, and then memory data A was sent back to 1973. It overtook his body and completed the mission. When he woke up in 2023, Wolverine still had memory data A, meaning the original memories he had of the dystopia and that world being sent back in time. Which also means that the new current timeline and the 50 years of him living in the changed past, let's call that memory data B, were effectively wiped out. Everything he'd done in the new timeline, everyone he met, all his experiences disappeared. Memory data A overtook his mind. We know this as he asked Professor X for a history lesson from everything since 1973. Now, if the past was truly changed, then memory data A should have been completely wiped out as it never happened. And this was already established in the beginning of the movie, when we saw how the present just disappeared once the past was altered. Memory data A should not have existed as it didn't happen. So this was a huge problem for time travelling in this movie. 
Think about it. We, we have 1973 Wolverine with 2023 data memory. He's in 2023 under the time traveling power. As soon as 1973 mission is completed, the 2023 scene is deleted. So it never happened. Those events did not occur. They should all be wiped. Memory data A should cease to exist just as the physical events cease to exist. So for this movie to kind of make sense, we need Wolverine in 1973 to wake up from a weird blackout and that's that. This then brings me to the movie I think dealt with time travel in the least problematic way but still had its own problems. So the last movie I want to focus on is The Butterfly Effect. So this film follows Evan, who finds as a child he has periods of blackouts. In addition, he experiences some traumatic events in his life. As he grows up, he finds an old diary and realises when he reads this diary, his mind transports back in time and overrides his body as a child. He then tries to change the past and stop all the traumatic events from happening. When he does this, he wakes up into the brand new future that his actions have led to. As he wakes, the new memories of the new timeline are almost zapped into his head all at once, so he is fully aware of the timeline and everything he has been through. The original future he was in is completely eliminated. Setting aside the magic of the journal and how the time travel actually happens, let's just suspend our disbelief on that one. This film does actually do a lot right. Firstly, we have mental time travel, so we don't have the issues of identity. Evan can only go back into his own body and can only go as far back as his DNA presence. Secondly, when Evan does go back in time, his child version experiences the blackouts. This makes sense, as when you override your mind, the younger version would be blacking out whilst the older version is in control. Thirdly, the memories of the new timeline are created in Evan's mind, which again, I think would be a likely scenario. If you have lived a life after altering the past and you experience those events, then definitely you should have those memories. Effectively, when Evan alters the past and goes back into the present, it would be the exact present he would be in in the new timeline, spatially and temporally where he would be. The problem this movie ran into was that Evan still retained his original memories from his original timeline. Now, this had to happen for the movie to happen, but to be truly accurate and escape the philosophical problems, this should not have happened. When Evan altered the past, the future would have been altered, meaning he would not have the original memories. He would only have the memories of the new timeline. This also led to other plot holes in the movie itself. We saw child Evan blacking out in the original timeline, when really this would only have happened in the altered timelines. And the prison crucifying scene was complete nonsense. Evan stabs his hands in the past, but the wounds appear in real time in the present, which didn't make any sense at all. If he stabbed his hands in the past, he would have carried the scars with him from the past point onwards. They wouldn't have instantly appeared in the present. It was complete nonsense. But that aside, I do think the butterfly effect got the closest in terms of escaping the philosophical problems of time travel. So then... What's the closest you could get to accurately depicting time travel in movies? Here's my thoughts, but before I get into that, I did want to mention a book that I think this audience would love. If you're watching this video, you clearly have a deep mind and you're interested in deep topics, then please check out Philosophy Vibes philosophical fiction book, Requisite Release. This is a philosophical novel written for a philosophical audience. The story follows Simon, a young man battling severe depression and undergoing a major existential crisis. Simon no longer sees any purpose or meaning to life. His nihilistic worldview has consumed him, and as a result, he has become a social recluse, developed debilitating anxiety, and destroyed all significant relationships. Simon is recommended to undergo cognitive behavioural therapy and begins seeing the therapist Linda, who is tasked with trying to help put his life back on track. The book is a compilation of Linda's therapy session notes and Simon's journal log. This is the story of a young man's journey of self-creation and the search for meaning in an absurd universe. If you are watching this video, then you are a person interested in philosophy, deep themes and thought-provoking material. This is definitely the book for you. It is available worldwide on Amazon. The links are below and all purchases really help out this channel and we really do appreciate it. Okay, so 
Here is what I think is the most accurate, least problematic version of time travel that should be depicted in movies. Firstly, mental time travel is the only one that would make sense. This does have limitations as you're only able to go as far back as you have some sort of physical presence. You can't go any further back than that, but this would escape all the problems of physical time travel. As I said, technologically or magically, the time travel device would recognize your DNA and match your mind across your timeline. Secondly, similar to the butterfly effect, when your future mind overwrites your past mind, your past mind would have a blackout as your future self takes control of your body. But here is what really needs to happen to make the most sense. As your mind is in your past self, As soon as you alter the past, your future mind updates, and so it gets further and further detached from the original timeline and the original memories that you initially had. So say I take over the mind of myself at age 10 to change something very specific that would completely alter my entire life from that point. As I'm changing the past, my future self and all my memories are changing with it to the point where I would completely forget the initial memories as they would have been altered. And once we get to a point where the future has changed enough that I have never visited the past, I'm automatically in the future the exact same time I was in before, but all the past events have been altered to the new timeline and I have no recollection of the previous timeline at all as this never happened. I wouldn't even have recollection of going back in time and changing the past. I wouldn't have the memory of doing this as that future version of me no longer exists as the past has been changed. All that would happen is that I had a blackout and as an adult all I remember is being told that I used to have blackouts. That's it. So one timeline, one physical identity, this would make the most sense and would not face the philosophical challenges we saw with the other movies we just discussed. So there we go, time travel philosophical problems and a potential solution for movie makers who want to make a time travel film that actually makes sense. What does everyone else think? Are there any other time travel problems you can think of? Additionally, what are your thoughts on my solution? Are there any philosophical problems with that? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to grab a copy of Requisite Release. The book is available on Amazon and the links are below. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and share. And for more videos on philosophy, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and I look forward to seeing you all soon.